really good to, to, to see you guys again. Man, the, um, I think everyone has said this, but like really, um, I was, I think when I first saw that you post this, I was like, oh man, like, I don't know. Uh, and then after listening to a couple episodes, I was like, dang, yeah, like this is really, um, it, uh, it was just, it's great to hear from everybody. And like, um, my yeah. wife actually listened to, I listened to like five episodes in a row last week, like after the first one, I was like, oh man, this is like really good. And then my wife started listening to the one with, with uh, Brent Peacock on it. It's oh just, yeah. Everyone's so interesting. I'm like, oh man, just, <laughs> mine will be, we'll be done before the hour's over. So, um, anyhow, I don't believe that there's no way. Anyhow. All right. Well, sounds like you're geared up and ready. Let's, uh, get started i'll give us a quick intro <laughs> welcome again to the sem podcast i am zach hewlett joined by my co-host jack bryce and we're joined today by john o'brien john it's so good to see you how are you doing well thank you now um you're in the houston area is that right that's right yeah okay southwest houston uh but still inside the loop for anyone who knows or actually, we're, no, we're just outside. Okay, nice. Well, we appreciate you taking time to come hang out with us. Just a, a quick reminder, we'll start pre-mission, we'll jump over the mission, and come back to the mission. Try and simplify that a little bit for everybody. Um, so the floor is yours, John. We're excited to listen. Go ahead. Cool. Um, yeah, so uh, pre-mission... Trying to think of the everyone else is like such good storytellers, and I was like, oh man, mine's gonna be um, basic. But anyhow, here's the, the long story short. I grew up in a place called Possum Trot, Kentucky. Um, really small town. Uh, like you can see one end of the town from the other. Kind of when you drive through this rural country road, you know, you come down this hill, Possum Trot, and then you can see at the other end of the dip, there's another sign exiting Possum Trot. So they're probably like. Um, no stoplights in the in the town i think there was like there were like two or three stop signs uh we had a gas station um and a volunteer fire department um and that was it um and so you know our family was pretty big uh definitely the only lds people in the in the community um uh so i grew up with um nine brothers and sisters including myself in my childhood and then my parents got divorced when i was about 14 and um, my dad had dad and stepmom had another five. So there are 14 of us. Um, they're still in, in Possum Trot. Um, and yeah. And so I, I, uh, all growing up, sorry, one second. No worries. Um, guest. <laughs> it's all good. Not our first cameo. Yeah, that's right. You guys probably have the same. I was kind of wondering, I was like, oh man, I knew Zach in my brain. I was like, oh, you're, you're Denver. And I was like, how is Zach pulling this off? But for some reason I thought Jack, I was like, in my brain, I was thinking you were in mountain time. And I was like, oh, well, this is probably right before death, that time for Jack. But how do you guys, <laughs> you know. My you kids know. are watching, I think they're watching a show downstairs. They're supposed to be there. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Um, we, we We handle it differently every single night when yeah. we have these so it, it is it, it's good i mean right now right above my head my daughter's watching the first harry potter film for probably the 20th time <laughs> and uh she just finished the book and we just got home from uh universal studios in florida and oh. so she's just absolutely entrenched in harry potter right now and uh and part of my wife's pre bed routine is reading portions of the next book. So she just, she's absolutely in her own world and I'll let her do it. That's awesome. <laughs> um, I need to, I need to get some tips. Maybe you can add a, a tips for raising kids section. Um, <laughs> but, uh, cause I don't know how to do it. Um, so anyhow, so I grew up in Kentucky, but a whole bunch of kids, I was desperate to get out of this town. Um, I couldn't tell you exactly why other than, I always felt like an outcast, which looking back, I think that was a really good thing, but I always felt like an outcast. Um, and like, like I was definitely, I was the only Mormon, um, other than like, you know, siblings and I had a bunch of siblings. And so, uh, but they were, you know, uh, two or three years older, two or three years younger. And so we'd never have a whole bunch at once. Um, 
And, uh, and then there were a couple other kids that, that floated around in school that were LDS as well. But, you know, at most we'd have like three of us, um, like the high school, for instance. Okay. And so, um, yes, it felt like an outcast from the religious standpoint. And then also we had a really big family, um, trying to think what else. Uh, and then I was like, not into sports or shooting things or four wheelers, uh, because my dad, you know, um, didn't for whatever reason, didn't let us get into that stuff. And so, um, I was always a bit of an outcast, like the computer game nerd and stuff like that. So whenever 18 came, I was like, get me, get me out. So I went out as far as about as far as I could get, um, to California, uh, had nothing to do with the fact that it was California, everything to do with the fact that my older brother who I was really close with was going there. And I was like, okay, well, what colleges are there in California? Let me apply to those colleges and go to one of those. Hmm. So I went to college in California, uh, in the Bay area, um, went to a school that ended up being like kind of my dream school. And then after, uh, studied physics and math, um, for a year, um, at the end of that year I was living with, uh, so that there was a great ward there. I just never really like integrated well with it. I think in my ward in, in Kentucky, I had never like developed super close bonds with folks. Um, uh, and so I, I didn't really have that like, um, like relationship with church. I went to church for, for church, not for people. Um, and so that's kind of how my freshman year was. Almost all of my friends were non-members, uh, stayed around, did um, research in a physics lab. And we studied gravitational waves, which is kind of, kind of fun thing. And um, at the end of it, um, my friends were kind of like, hey, like, why are you, you know, like all kind of through the year they were peppered on. But towards the end, laid it on pretty thick, like, hey, like, you, should, you know, we don't think you should do this. And, you know, like, that's when all of the sort of like anti-Mormon or anti-religious rhetoric started to like come out more and more and more. Um, and, and, um, at the same time I started like buckling down, um, from like a testimony standpoint and really like investigating. Um, yeah. And, and I had, I had like this wonderful, um, I don't know if wonderful is quite the right word. It, uh, wonderful is not the word I would have used at the time, but, um, had a very strong, um, sort of like literally come to Jesus experience, <laughs> uh, um, sort of towards the summer of my, uh, freshman year and um applied a little bit later than most folks for the mission um got my mission call um in september which was like right before school was starting um and i was so um i was doing this sort of in, uh research uh in, internship or whatever and my brother had moved out back out to to california because he left like during the middle of the year moved back out to california and was living a few miles away. And my dad was in town for like a consulting job. And, um, I said, Hey, like I got my call, let's get together. Um, so I drove up, uh, it was like 20, 30 minutes away or actually took the train cause I didn't have a car. I met at my brother's house and we opened the call and it was, you know, Scotland, um, I'll say the same thing as everyone else, but Edinburgh mission, um, <laughs> really excited to go to Edinburgh. Uh, and, uh, or sorry, I, I was really excited in some ways. Um, I had been there actually, like strangely enough, about two or three years before we briefly visited the UK and Edinburgh was like my absolute like favorite town. It felt the most sort of like European and like old castles and old streets and cool buildings and stuff. Um, anyhow, so I was excited on that side. On the other side, I'd always thought based off of like personal, you know, gut feeling, intuition, patriarchal blessing that I was going to be going to some place that was sort of like exotic, like in Africa, China, something like that, where it'd be like learning a foreign language and living like in the sticks and whatever. And so part of me was like excited because I was like, oh, I know this place. Another part of me was like really disappointed because I wasn't wasn't going to be learning this different, you know, totally different language and culture. Um, and so I think that's different from a lot of like U.S. elders, um, just because like uh, it, it, it felt a little bit too like... Um, within re like like within my normal experience too easy yeah um okay. wow, was i wrong right but um <laughs> anyhow so i went to bed so the the other disappointing much much more disappointing thing i was just excited to be going on a mission at the time um like i didn't give i didn't really care about the place i was like you know what i'm just super excited to go you know serve the lord on a mission um and so like let's do this um and then the call was for december so i was going to be missing essentially my first quarterback so um the place where i was going to school did uh quarters instead of semesters so we had three of them and um in, in order to basically uh the path i was on for physics you had to be there sort of like sequentially and so if i missed the first quarter i'd essentially have to like miss the whole year 
and have to restart the next year. So I was a little bit bummed, but I was like, you know what? Like, this is what the Lord wants. It's going to be fine. Um, and I like briefly expressed this to my dad, not like anything big. I was like, oh, like, that's a bummer. I kind of wish it was in September instead of December, but, you know, is what it is. No big deal. So I go back to my, um, my, the dorm I was staying in at the time and I get a phone call at like 6 a.m., which is uncharacteristically early for me. Um, and my dad's like, Hey, like, you know, good news, John Michael. Um, I talked to the, <laughs> talked to the, um, missionary department and, uh, actually the, your call got moved to, uh, got moved up. And I was like, Oh, that's, that's great. Like, when is it? And he's like, it's today. Um, can you fly to, can you fly to rest <laughs> today? Um, and I was like, wow, that's pretty, pretty fast. Like I got to quit my job, like get out of the place I'm living in, um, pack up whatever small stuff I had get set apart for the Melchizedek priesthood, um, interview and and then go get temple endowments, buy all of my like mission clothes and everything, and then get on a flight and go. And I was like, okay, well like, yeah, let's do this. Um, and he called me a couple hours later and he's like, okay, so good news, bad news. Good news is it's still going to be like right now. Um, bad news is it's not going to be Chorley. Um, you're going to be going to, to Provo because they couldn't get the, um, your visa stuff done quickly enough. Um, like, okay, that's, you know, totally fine. Um, so that day was like an absolute blitz. So I wake up, hang up the phone and it was just like nonstop phone calls and emails trying to like cancel things, like let people know I was going to be gone for two years. Um, like <laughs> it was to stick my boxes, uh, I called the Bishop and to, to see if he could like, I didn't have a car. So I was like, Hey, could you take me to get a suit? Uh, could you, you know, take me to the state president's house to get like an interview and all this stuff. And he was kind of oh like, goodness. He was, a, he was a freaking champ. Um, and so he and his wife sort of like uh, tag teamed it and got me through the day. Um, but yeah, I did all that in a day. Um, and so it was, it was a whirlwind. And, and then I just remember at the end of the night. Um, so by the time evening came around, I was standing outside the temple, had just been endowed. And I was like, wow, this is like, um, uh, this is super exciting and super fast. And then I went to sleep in a hotel by the airport. It was my dad. He dropped me off um, kind of at the, you know, the, uh, like at the sidewalk. <laughs> like, See you later. <laughs> um, so I went and stood in line. And I was like, "All right, I guess here we come, Utah." Um, that's nuts, man. That's so, pretty. Much- so that was September then. September uh, two thousand five. Yeah. Okay. That's amazing. I-, I had no idea that that took place. I knew that you had gone to the Provo MTC, but I did not realize the circumstances which made that what it was. Yeah. <laughs> um we go and yeah so that, that's kind of pre-mission um i think not too much to talk about i had a very different mtc experience obviously than <laughs> other my group was going to columbus ohio <laughs> uh <laughs> and so i didn't know anyone from the mtc right um when i arrived in, in scotland um um but yeah uh so did i think two weeks two weeks in the mtc flew out to scotland um I want to say it was like the weekend of general conference. And I remember thinking, Oh, this is really weird because like, I want to listen to general conference. I'm like a missionary and, you know, super, um, uh, very, um, zealous at the time, Mm -hmm. like letter of the lost thing. And I was like, Oh man, am I like sinning by not listening to conference? Um, anyhow, so (laughs) got on the flight, flew out to, <laughs> with no companion out to um out to England uh no out to Scotland I guess we didn't no no stops and maybe we laid over actually in in um in like Manchester or something but got to Scotland and met um the I guess the first people I met were the Vreens and then got there and like bright eyed bushy tailed Patton and, and and Martin um Alboy and and uh, I think Patty Cakes is he probably. <laughs> and probably does not appreciate patty cakes but um that that was one of his nicknames and al boy was was uh, alistair <laughs> so yeah alistair was like um he he was like a little bit um i'm trying to remember he might refute this but he seemed a little bit like a little bit you know shell-shocked and green not like a ton like i was just completely discombobulated like the, my time zones were off and i was like i don't know what's going on i don't know who any of you people are <laughs> like yes let's do this and then Pat, i remember elder patton and um was like super gregarious and friendly and like his brother had served in in uh scotland as an ap and like he just seemed to like really really fit in super well uh, and i was like man if i can like 
if I can get there where I feel just like that comfortable, um, I'd love it. So anyhow, that, that was the beginning of the mission. Um, Holy cow. So quite a whirlwind. Yeah. Well, catch us up on life since you've been home from Scotland to now, and then we can go back through the mission. Cool. Um, so post-mission, I got back. Um, uh, Alistair didn't talk a ton about this. Um, Christian talked a little bit about this thing called Hammer Time, uh, which is the sort of like mantra that we had towards the end of my mission. Um, and I was one of the instigators of it. Um, and uh, so anyhow, the net net is I came back very intense. Um, and I think that was like, uh, in some ways it showed, showed up as like very, uh, gregarious and, and like forward. Um, and in other ways it was like very off putting to people. Um, and so for the first time in two years, I was living with like heathens, um, you know, like non-member people and, and they're like, drink, you know, doing things that college age kids do, um, that are not LDS. Um, so you actually made it back to start school yes. right away then. Yeah. I made it back and it was oh. like the day before school started. So when I got back, it was like, you know, land, uh, got released, went to my dorm and, you know, uh, picked classes to start the next day. Wow. So, um, very back to back. And that's like a theme for the rest of my life. I feel like, (laughs) but, um, uh, I don't, I don't make time for things in between. Um, but anyhow, so I got back, I was, I was quite intense. Um, made some really good friends. Uh, like I instantly wanted to bond with sort of the other return missionaries, the other two folks from my, from my, um, singles ward that had served at the same time that I didn't really get to know that well beforehand. Um, great guys, still like really good friends since, um, made some fantastic friends, uh, in the singles ward. Um, and I like, I was just living life really intensely. So like I tried really, really hard in school, like studied a ton, tried really hard to be social, which was like very outside of my nature dated a lot. Um, and then, uh, studied, you know, the gospel a ton. Um, so we had, we had institute five days a week, which maybe that's normal in like Utah or the mountain West. I'm not sure in places outside of the mountain West, it's like a weekly thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so anyhow, I felt very like excited to be able to go to institute every day at lunch and just learn and learn and learn and learn. And, And, um, you know, like really dig deep and ask a bunch of questions, kind of a, a theme that I'd like um, gotten used to from the mission of just being able to like really dig in and, and learn the gospel. And frankly, that was like one of the biggest blessings in my mind of serving in an English speaking mission was um, my, my friends uh, in our sort of like returning cohort um, spent a ton of time learning the language and the culture. And like uh, I spent a ton of time studying the gospel um, in, in that same time. Um, and so anyhow, I uh, got back, um, finished a degree in physics and math, uh, did not get married despite my, um, best efforts to do so. Um, and then went to Southern California, did a PhD in physics, um, got a little bit like jaded with academia. And so I went, um, out to Atlanta to do a six month internship. Um, and I was like, okay, like this will be sort of my, um, six month, um, what's the word? Uh, what's the the oath that like nuns and priests take celibacy <laughs> so anyway six months like celibacy or like you know non-dating period because i was like there's not gonna be anyone in georgia that's you know that that i should be dating anyhow i got there and i uh at like the first institute class there was this girl and i was like oh she's cute and she's like asking great questions and like really engaged in like the class as opposed to sort of the social element and i was like oh that like i want to talk to that girl um and uh there were some like mishaps where basically I thought I was like asking her on dates and she thought I was like not asking her on dates. Uh, (laughs) But after several months, eventually things cleared up and it became clear that we wanted to date each other. We dated each other. We're married uh, eight years now and have three kids. Um, And the uh, six month internship turned into seven years in Atlanta and now uh, (laughs) a few years in Houston. So, yeah. And are you working in your field in physics? No, um, I ditched that. Uh, so I went into to finance, like machine learning based stock trading uh, for a year in Atlanta. And then I went into um, software engineering for a year uh, in a health, at a healthcare company. And then I've been doing entrepreneurial things since. So I've started I'm on my fourth startup at this point, um, still engaged in two of those, trying to be trying to make it one at this point. Um, and uh, yeah, and so that takes up a lot of my time. Uh, and then kids, as, as you both know, take up a lot of time. What, uh, what ages are your kids? 
uh, five, three, and one month. Yeah. Oh, no wonder you're so busy. Yeah, yeah that's busy. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, bless you and your your wife. My gosh. Thank you. Well, cool. All right, we'll go back to the mission. You know, start us off from your first area, your uh, your trainer, and go from there. Yeah. So, um, first area was uh, I think Elder or sorry, President Vreen's had like a way of, um, sometimes I think he did these, this is like a joke or something, but he paired me with like the only other missionary from Kentucky in the mission. Um, <laughs> Elder, Elder Jump, uh, who was, who was a champ, really nice guy. Um, frankly, I haven't talked to him and before I forget, like it would be awesome to, to hear what he's been up to. Um, uh, but yeah, Elder Jump, Scott Jump, um, we went up to Bridge Don, Brigadon, Don, um, or was it Br Brigadoon, Brigadoon, yeah, Brigadoon, yeah. Um, and uh, I don't know if um, Jack, were you in in? Uh, I I know Zach was in Aberdeen for quite a while. Were you ever up in Aberdeen? I trained Zach in the Peterhead area. That was my oh. my stint in the Aberdeen zone. <laughs> so did you ever? You must have made it down to, but maybe not to the the Brigadoon apartment uh, right there behind the like gas station or whatever. Can't say I did. Yeah. Um, and what, a, what a place. So I, I got there, it was like September. So coming from sunny, beautiful California, going, you know, into, um, September in Scotland and then going to the freaking, uh, North, you know, the granite city, which like, there's a, there's a reason it's named that. Um, and I can tell you one thing, like, there's no winter, like, a, like a winter in Aberdeen because it is like constantly gray sky. Like the sun comes up super late, goes down super early you know, gray buildings, gray streets, gray sidewalks, like people look gray at that point. They're wearing gray, like <laughs> hardly any sun. And I got super depressed. Um, I don't think I've been as depressed in my life. Uh, so I was, whenever I started my mission um, and going into it, there, I, I had um, very much this thing of like exact obedience drilled into my brain. And so I think, so subsequently I've seen, there's actually a condition for this, like a mental condition. It's, it's like religious zealot, zealotry or something. But sometimes people take it like too seriously. <laughs> um, and so like for me, it was like, okay, the white handbook says wake up at 6 a.m. And from 6 to 6, what was it? Uh, 6 to 6.30 is exercise. Yeah. Shoot, we're getting you're already overzealous because it's six thirty yeah. to seven. Come yeah. on, no, six thirty to seven. Yeah, that's okay. So anyhow, but if I was if I was off literally by a minute, I remember feeling guilty and like and and that was for everything. Oh. So it was like, oh, like you know, um, we forget we didn't commit this person. Like literally every person we saw on the street, at a door, on the bus, if we didn't like talk to that person and like invite them to be baptized, I felt guilty. Oh wow. Um, wow. and as you know, like on your mission, like you don't exactly do that. Um, all the time and for a good reason. And, uh, anyhow, so I, I just had these like unrealistic expectations. And so I remember after a couple of weeks in the mission, I was like, um, I had what I now recognize as a panic attack. Um, and I like locked myself in the bathroom for like three hours in the morning and I like couldn't leave. I was just, I remember feeling numb and tingly all over and, and I felt trapped and I was like, oh my gosh, like, um, I'm, you know, like, I'm just, I'm broken this whole thing. Like, I'm just, it's totally messed up. Like I can't do this anymore. Um, I'm not someone who generally quits. And so I, I, it wasn't in my mind to quit, but I was just like, I just want to like melt away out of existence and like not be here anymore. Like not just be, not be on the mission, just like not exist. Like I was just really depressed. Um, anyhow, um, I can't remember who I think, um, do you guys remember elder Willis? Oh yes. Yep. Blonde. <laughs> George, George, <laughs> um, a shout out to George Willis to come on the podcast. I wonder, I wonder what he's up to, but anyhow, um, anyhow, I think that I can't remember if he, he ever found out about this or knew about it, but I don't know who Scott uh, elder jump called at the time, but I just remember sitting in there and he, he just kind of like hung out and was like, you okay? Like, do you need anything, whatever? And like, you know, should we call anyone or whatever? Um, after a few hours of just like being really in my head, I came out and I was like, okay, like, let's just go. Um, and we just, you know, kept doing what we were doing. But, um, yeah, it was, it was a point in time in the mission where it was like very much like a, you know, like a, um, from one of the other calls, like a Megner era. This is like, you know, Christian Lucas, Tobias, Megner, Aberdeen type thing where you're just freaking pounding the streets, knocking doors. Um, 
and uh, there's like a different type of um, like hospitality in the UK and I think especially Scotland is very different than hospitality in <laughs> much of the US. Uh, and so I just remember thinking at the time, I'm like, man, I'm getting crushed by the weather, by the, it being dark, by people like yelling at me. And then I go to a lot of these members homes and like their, their style of like humor was like, <laughs> like a little bit poking and digging. And I hadn't gotten used to that yet. And so I'm like, <laughs> I'm dying here, man. Like everybody hates me. <laughs> uh, anyhow, so, so Bridge Don, um, there were some like good times and, and people that like the, the people that I, person that I remember the most, I don't know if you knew Craig Sinclair, but um great. yeah i know greg sinclair really well and spent a lot of like dark evenings in his very dark apartment trying to like um you know grapple with his like in and outs from the gospel um but uh yeah it, like felt like it became super close with with him um uh scott jump like i think he did a great job of just like tolerating being around me um and like you know breaking me in sort of thing like um and it's, for the record he was like uh quite quite he was like better than almost anyone else I was with on the mission for like actually keeping rules pretty well. Um, so I, I just like unnecessarily, um, gave him a hard time. But, uh, so after, Hmm. after Scott jump, um, I went up to Inverness, um, Inverness, I was with, uh, Colby Hawkins and, um, uh, Peacock was there. I think that, um, uh, Brandon Osman was there. He was definitely there when I first got there. And then who's the other? Oh, and there were sisters. Oh man, the sisters, they were magical. Um, pretty sister Marjorie, was it like green? There were, uh, sister Lyon, sister green and sister, um, I think it was green. And then sister, um, shoot, I'm friends with her on Facebook. Her name's like kind of long. Um, it's really bad. Don't air this part. Uh, but, uh, was it Sister Sieg Miller? Yes, Bonnie Sieg Miller. Yeah. yeah, man, they were like they were literally like angels, man. Like they, um, I'm pretty sure, like they just like mentally just saved me because I, I felt like they were just like super, they were righteous and like good people, but also like they acted like moms. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was like like God bless them for for what they did because it was like uh, I went through some like rough times. Um, and, uh, that, that was like, it was, it was really just like the way that they treated us. They, they were like, you know, had us over to their apartment and like, uh, gave us food and like, um, a bunch of other stuff just made us feel like, you know, your mom would make you feel. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, loved, uh, I thought Inverness was a blast. It was a super gorgeous city. Um, uh, got to know, um, what is it, uh, up on the hill, birdie bubbles, um, really well. Um, and not as well as, as Peacock who he loved. Uh, but I was sort of like this, like acceptable, um, chauffeur for, for Peacock. So, um, yeah, I got to know, um, man, what is Bert's last name? Not bubbles. Um, you know, uh, Bert and the, um, man, names are like so bad right now. And then the, the, uh, gosh, what was the, um, family? It was Julie and, um, do you know who I'm talking about? Did you guys serve in, in Inverness? Williams. I, did, I didn't serve there, but I know who you're talking about. It's sister Williams. Mm-hmm. Um, they had a great family and then like Ben Clark was her brother. Um, uh, so yeah, some classic people in Inverness. I, um, yeah, had a, had a great time with, uh, Colby Hawkins. So I was still like a little bit like in this sort of religious zealotry moment of my, of my life where like any rule being broken was like bad, but, um, at the same time, um, uh, like Colby Hawkins did a really good job of sort of like threading the needle needle of being like, um, very much spirit of the law rather than letter of the law. And I was like letter of the law at the time. Um, so yeah, did, uh, really enjoyed my time with, um, with him and up there, it was still a little bit, you know, it was like still winter time. Um, still dark sun still goes, still, still goes down really early, but there were some great people, really good hearts up there. Um, and, uh, yeah um let's see from there um oh yeah one of the like I, I think i think peacock went on this trip with me um this was with uh yeah i think it was like all four of us um colby peacock and uh one other missionary i'm forgetting who this was we we took this trip out to I- the isle of sky and man what a freaking blast i felt so this was one of the times where i was on the border feeling really guilty but also like really loving the just like gorgeous scenery of the highlands and like you go, you go by like, uh, 
um, this awesome castle that's in James Bond. And then you go out to this island, which is like, it's like out of another world or something. There's like a single store, or maybe two, there's like a store and a restaurant and they both are closed on like Sundays and they're open from like, you know, as typical Scottish fashion, they're open from like nine to five. Um, and so if you're on that Island, man, there's like, you, you better get your food while, while the store is open sort of thing. Yeah. So there's lady out there. We took her sacrament once while I was out there. And I just remember thinking like, man, she, it was, it was, I think it was an American lady or it was a lady that was married to someone who wasn't a member and it was like a four hour drive. So it was, it was an all day trek. Like you'd wake up early in the morning, book it out there, give her sacrament, book it back. Um, and that was a good experience. Like the, the scenery and stuff was, was fun. Um, listening to Truman Matson, uh, lectures on, on, uh, Joseph Smith was really good. Um, but also just meeting this member who was like, uh, so devoted, um, to be able to like, um, you know, one, like she came out sometimes to church, but man, that, what, what a trip. Um, yeah, especially yeah. when your spouse is not a member. And, and so it just, just seeing the sort of like devotion of her and someone who, who like remembers the gospel, right. And like still lives it, even when they're living literally on an Island with nobody else. Um, it, it, it was pretty like pretty awesome to see that. So, right. Okay. Um, That's yeah. Cool. Okay. So, so Inverness, um, uh, was it, was it elder Wilkinson by the way, Danny Wilkinson? He came up after, um, after me, uh, after I left. So I was there for three transfers. Wait, was it? I think it was. I trained. So I was with Elder um, Hawkins for uh, three months through Christmas. Um, and then. Uh, oh yeah. We watched Batman begins for Christmas. That was great. I don't know if you, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you guys were watching. Down. <laughs> uh, I watched you... Incredibles. I think that Christmas. Okay. <laughs> I can't even remember. A little bit looser up there. That was, that was kind of a strange time on my mission. Cause in 2005, I had just been assigned to train elder marsh. And we had whitewashed into Montrose. So um, I kid you not, the first Sunday was Christmas. And I'm sitting in a stranger's house. So that was kind of an interesting experience, watching them and their grandkids and everything, um, open presents. And, you know, that was that was a lot of fun. But I did not watch a movie or do anything like outside of my norm that day. I went golfing and watched Incredibles and I think Finding Nemo because I hadn't seen either of those. <laughs> on <my> hey, <laughs> that sounds amazing. It was, it was a great day. <laughs> yeah. I remember absolutely loving Christmas. Like, um, I, don't, I, I can't remember where we were for the second one, but we watched, <laughs> we were at some ladies, some like older ladies house. Um, it was kind enough to have us over for like the whole day. And we watched, uh, the, uh we watched queen live at Wimbledon. And I was like, this is, this is insane. It was just what she wanted to watch. And I was like, okay, we're watching it. It was like three hours. I, by the end of that three hours, I freaking loved Queen. I was like, man, this guy, this band's incredible. Why have I not heard of these people before? How can you not? Man, that, that was one of the most epic concerts of all time. Yeah. Oh my um, gosh. That's funny. So, uh, yeah, so Christmas there. And then, um, uh, then I trained um, B unit, uh, Elder Borgothos, Mike Borgothos. Okay. And um, we, uh, yeah, it was sort of like, now I realize like um, the, the sort of like pest that I was when I started my mission is sort of like endemic of most missionaries when they start where they're like very gung ho and like, why aren't you baptizing and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, like, hold on. Like, I get it. <laughs> I've been I've been here not so long ago. Like I totally understand that, you know, how you're feeling. Um, but anyhow, he he was very uh, you know, very eager to to um uh you know baptize and and um teach. And so uh had like a you know, I, I got to sit on the other side of this um uh relationship where I was sort of having to like, you know, um bring him back in a little bit and be like, okay, like, you know, hold on, like <laughs> do it a little bit differently than this. And, um, so anyhow, um, like when we're, you know, when you're setting your goals, it's like, all right, 10 baptisms. I'm like, all right, well, <laughs> let's see if we can do, let's see if we can do one. Yeah. 
<laughs> One step at a time, Elder. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, indeed. Uh, so, okay, so I uh, was there for six weeks with him and then came down to the office um, to be with, uh, it was Elder, I think it was Elder Stanley and Elder Bjacker. Um, I think we were in a, a trio. And um, I remember being like, at first I was like, I don't know what to make of this. Cause like, this is not the usual like leadership ladder. This is like some weird thing that, you know, people don't do. And I was like, oh, have I done something wrong? Like, <laughs> but you know what, I, I must've screwed something up. Um, <laughs> and so I was like, okay, whatever, man. Like at this point, you know, uh, any, any desires. And, and also like everyone feels guilty for having any ambitions for this. Cause unlike the, the normal world where you're like supposed to have ambitions um, in the mission, you're not, uh, not, not supposed to have like ambitions of, you know, leadership. And so kind of weird, like to have this sort of like dual thing in your head, but I was like, okay, like, you know what I need to, those sinful ambitions that I had, they're gone anyway. Like I'm in this weird freaking office role. Uh, and I'm just going to like, you know, live life and sort of just be a missionary and take things as they come. And I, um, it felt like literally like coming out of darkness into the sunlight. Um, because that's like, in some ways what it was, I was coming from like almost as far North. I mean, not as far, I think, uh, you were in Orkney, right? I was. Yeah. So it was not that far North. It yeah, definitely it was in Shetland, um, or even Invergordon, but anyhow, Inverness is pretty far North. <laughs> and, um, I think it's like Alaska or something like that. It's like way up there. Right. Yep. Yeah, G- so, Juneau, Alaska, and uh, Kirkwall are like on the same latitude, is what my parents told me when I was on my mission. And I was like, that explains why the sun's up at ten thirty and down by three. Yeah, so it's pretty crazy. Um, it's brutal. Um, so okay, so yeah, uh, down to Edinburgh, um, and I freaking had a blast because it was like the sun, the spring was coming around, so my first spring and then summer in in Scotland. And as I'm sure uh, you guys remember, like summers in Scotland are fantastic uh, because the weather's great and the sun is up like forever. Um, <laughs> the sun is up longer than we were allowed to be up. So mm-hmm. um, my like, I think I, I learned this this thing called SAD on the mission, season, seasonal yeah. active disorder. <laughs> it's like, that's a real thing. Um, I think everyone uh, on the mission, I, I sort of like came up with a theory that I think everyone has that to some extent, but, um, definitely, um, like places in the extremes bring it out and in Scotland brought it out in me. So <laughs> I just, yeah, I just, I just have to, I have to laugh because I'm fortunate that I didn't have to deal with that too much when I was in Orkney because of the fact that other Willis was my companion. And he made every day enjoyable. So, Elder Willis, come on the podcast. We love you, and we'd love to talk to you. Oh man, um, yeah, I've heard. I, I didn't know him super well, but I heard a lot of stories from. I think Jump was in the same group as him. So okay, um, I learned some expressions that <laughs> are not appropriate for this show. Um, okay, so um, we can make this a mature episode if you need. To. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> flag it. um anyhow um yeah i i loved so stanley and yacker were like polar opposites like stanley was like very um like i think he was maybe even more sort of like letter of the law than i was um at that point and yacker was like all the way other end of the spectrum and so i actually like for me it was like watching yin and yang and i just sort of like sat in the middle and watched this like beautiful feud between these these two um and i and i loved it and because like i never had to take anyone's side and i could just sort of like oh yeah like this is great like haha that's so fun and elder biaker like oh yeah let's be there on time elder stanley um so I had a great uh, six weeks and then i think i think stanley went to like train or something and then he became an, a, a traveling ap at some point there um, and then I, I stayed in the mission home for like forever. I was there for six months, um, which I know is not forever compared to some people have been in places even longer, but felt like a long time. Um, and so I saw like, you know, I saw the Vreens leave and I saw the Fredericks come in and I saw like uh, a whole bunch of different APs cycle through, um, uh, became really good friends with Jonathan DePold, which you should try to try to get him on here. He's a future um, guest. He's definitely going to come on. It's just I, a matter of when. Has he committed? Has he? Uh, 
Yes, he's given me his I will be on. So it's just a matter of finding dates. Good guy. Um, so, yeah, so, um, yeah, I became good friends with him uh, at, at sort of in this period. And, um, yeah, and, and I just remember having a totally different view of the mission. Um, you got to, like, see the mission map, and that was exciting. You got to sort of see some of the excitement from, like, you know, the lemons uh, followed by the marshes. Um, you got to see the mission president walk in and out, which is like always exciting to see the mission president. You got to see like different visiting, you know, folks come in and out um, while I'm doing this paperwork over here, uh, you know, four to six hours a day. Um, and the paperwork side, like that was like easy. Like I'm, I do a lot of computer work. That was from my background anyway. And so I was like, this is pretty natural and easy to, to do. Um, and so it felt like sort of a nice, like way to sort of get an inside view of the world um, of, on, on the mission. And, um, so was there for six months, loved that. Um, it, it also, Edinburgh was like way more social. Like if you're in, you know, Inverness is a little bit more social because you've got like two or three sets of missionaries in the ward, Brigadoon, man, you're at one one up there, at least when I was there yeah. and occasionally you'd see the Aberdeen elders, but not super often. Um, uh, and so compare that to like Edinburgh where I think there were like up to like 10 sets of missionaries there at one point when I was there, it was insane, but it, it was awesome. Like you walk into church and there's just like a squad of missionaries. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Edinburgh was a blast. Um, and yeah, I think that's where I like really learned how to like, sort of like be more of myself um, and just kind of embrace, uh, you know, embrace being a missionary. Um and like focus less on the rules and the details and more on the sort of like spirit of things. Mm -hmm. Um, so left there after six months, went up to, um, Dundee, uh, was district leader there with, um, McLeod, Garrett McLeod, man, what a guy. Um, <laughs> he, yeah. he's another person to get on the podcast. Um, uh, have you been in contact with him in recent days or months? Not recently, but I think I'm still friends on on um, on Facebook, and I know several people from his ward, like who I've like come across over the years. I'm like, oh, you're from, you know, Calgary or from Alberta? Do you know, you know, Garrett McLeod? They're like, oh my gosh, yeah, we know Garrett. Um, <laughs> so maybe I'll just like send a, I could send a letter. Uh, but, you know. Hopefully, you could share this with him and uh, try and get his attention. I've reached out a couple times and. No, uh, I haven't had any response, so I, maybe it's just because it's the big bad elder Hewlett that's reaching out. So we'll see. Yeah, um, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll reach out and see what he says. Um, cool. See if I can get him to to respond to me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, McLeod, man, that was a that was really good. We were there, so we were there through I think Christmas of I was there through Christmas of that year, and um, which means I must have been there for three months with McLeod. Um, yeah. And enjoyed that. It was like kind of weird for me to be a uh, district leader. Um, like, um, but yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. Um, enjoyed really the area that ward, man, what a, like, what a great ward, um, yeah. sneeze and like, um, a whole bunch of other people, uh, man, what a fantastic ward. Um, yeah. so, but yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say my favorite people from, that ward is the Kios. And one of my favorite experiences ever was going to their house for a dinner appointment and sitting in their kitchen with, I don't know how many children they have. I think they have like maybe nine or 10 and they range from our age to, you know, little, little kids. And they were just all over the place, but man, it was just, I, I don't know. It, it screamed like everything amazing about, the the home life of members of the church in scotland it was it was so cool yeah um for some reason i don't think i think they weren't in my area oh so really no i'm super well but yeah i we were in so dundee had we opened up a new area and it was sort of like um, okay I to look at a map to remember where it was but it was a little bit like it, we didn't cover city center or any of that it was sort of like I remember correctly dundee's like on the coast right and so we were like the eastern side and like up the coast a little bit okay um and i think that they were like i think there were three or four there was like dundee one dundee two we were something that wasn't called dundee and then like the cooper sisters oh um, interesting okay. at all so dundee had four areas when i was there i believe anyhow but yeah they heard a lot of great things about the kios 
um, the sneeze were, were in our area and they were like hilarious and, and great. Um, also there was like unlimited, um, not unlimited, but you could, we could always go down to Fisher and Donaldson's. Oh my goodness. Like there've been times. Did you, did you guys ever have that? Like the, is it a chip shop? No, it's, it's the, um, so I think Elder Fisher actually introduced this to me. Um, it's this like donut and it's, it's like the perfect donut, man. It's got like a very thin, like dough with like toffee on top and then perfect custard inside. I don't remember that. That's interesting. Um, they still exist today. So you can like find them on the internet or whatever, but anyhow, it's fantastic. It was like on the high street downtown, which we were never at, but. Um, other than like zone conference to get this donut on the way from the train station. Um, <laughs> so. Put it on my list for when I go back. Yeah. Oh man. Like, I think that's, that's like one of three meals in Scotland that I would like, you know, go out of the way for. <laughs> it's a must. Yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah. So from there, um, uh, went to Aberdeen again and, as you may have guessed from like earlier in this conversation, I had some sort of some like slightly um, negative like associations with Aberdeen, nothing that, you know, the people did like, this was not like an association with people necessarily as much as it was just like myself, like being in a dark place at the time. Um, And I went back up there in kind of like a dark time, got to serve with uh, Brent Peacock, which was um, he and I are like very, uh, very different personalities. And so he probably, uh, I think I, I listened to his episode and um, he didn't mention me much, much. And I think there's a reason we didn't, we didn't gel super well necessarily. Um, I think he, he just like really, he's like a super gregarious, nice person. And he just like was trying to be friends with me and nice to me and whatever. And I like, for whatever reason, I was just like very focused on like, I still had a little bit of the sort of like um, sort of like religious zealot, zealotry in me and like, you know, Um, like joking felt bad to me. Like I was like, Oh, you know, missionaries shouldn't be joking and and like comedic and whatever. Um, And as I'm sure, you know, from uh, elder Peacock, that is very much uh, not his style um, style to be, you know, uh, is to be that way. Um, And I think it's great. Like it loosens up a lot of people. um, And and I think it does a really good job, but um, Mm -hmm. that was not like my personality at the time. And, uh, but yeah, um, enjoyed you know had a, had a good time together we played some funny games um this one i don't know he did not share this one um i bet he remembers it we used to play this game where um you were with him right before me i think right i was yeah he killed yeah. me off um okay so i think you probably played this game with him too, <laughs> where you take the mariva from the top of the hill and if you if you're coming back down to the flat you'd kick it into neutral and you'd see how <laughs> how close to parking it in the garage you could get without putting it back in gear. Oh, that, do you remember that? Of course I do. <laughs> so Peacock and I moved into that flat because we discovered that the two story flat of the other Al- Aberdeen elders there for whatever reason, I didn't know this when I was greeny, but there's like a storage area underneath the stairs. And we went in there one day for who knows why i have no idea and we open the door and it's just the whole entire thing is black mold it was the most disgusting thing i'd ever seen in my entire life and uh and so i we said hey we got to get these guys out of here this is not good and missionaries have been living there mind you since i was a greenie so you know it'd been almost two years maybe a year and a half at that point so peacock called the office and said, Hey, we're going to find a new apartment and we're going to move these guys into our flat, which our flat was really nice because you could, it was on that, uh, the cobblestone walk and you could walk right into like Aberdeen city center from there, which was in their area. Um, so, but yeah, I remember parking in the garage, uh, parking the Mariva in the garage. And I remember that drive down that hill from the stake center to our flat. It was just, it was one of the funnest things ever. That's too funny. I completely forgot about that until you brought it up. And you had to go through this sort of like stone archway into a garage, which <laughs> very <laughs> with parking spaces. But man, you had to bring the freaking wing mirrors in to fit in that thing. Yeah, that's I was true. very. I think we were all pretty good at driving um, over there because you had to be to get a license. 
Yeah. And I remember driving and I like, anyhow, I got a little bit too um, gutsy, uh, but I took the sucker. I think, I think Peacock could do it pretty well. Um, Anyhow, I I took it straight in and clipped the side. (laughs) (laughs) It was the end of that game. We stopped playing. Stopped playing. (laughs) (laughs) I remember the look on Peacock's face when I went like careening into the side because usually like we'd bring it in, you know, we, we would always like drive that sucker straight in there. Like, you know, you'd like a, literally a centimeter on each side of the, and just pull her straight in. Like, don't even think about it. Yeah. And, uh, that time I just like clipped the side and it, and the car just stopped and the bricks like <laughs> fell out and I was just, like white and Peacock played it super cool. He was like, well, <laughs> <laughs> I forget exactly what he said, but he was like very, he was like very calm about it and like, wasn't like, Oh, you, you know, you totally screwed the pooch here. He was like, you know, very like, uh, yeah, like, uh, positive, you know, not dogging on me about it. So, <laughs> uh, bless his heart for being like, well, um, the, fun, the funny thing is, is so I was the driver in our companionship and at the time, you know, it's, it's getting into the winter months. And so I had Jack remember my big down puffy coat. So I used to have Peacock get out before I'd pull in because otherwise I would drive like purposely more to the left so that I have enough room to get out. Otherwise I would have had to climb out the boot or something. I, I there's no way that I would have been able to do that with both of us in that garage. I'm <laughs> such a ridiculous anyhow. <laughs> um, so that was, uh, man, um, I'm trying to remember some of the, the, like actually the, member stories and stuff I, i'm like really bad for i remember the adams really well and karen karen and um friend with shoot what is karen adams husband's or former husband's name um you know who i'm talking about i'm trying Paul, to remember hilarious he was in bridge dawn i think they were in bridge dawn ward actually but maybe they switched to aberdeen and they, they definitely knew you you definitely knew him um you're karen, talking the you're talking the wares is it yeah, adam yeah. adam Ware or someone else Karen and something Adam was their name. Oh, Jeez, yes. Beard. I know exactly what you're talking about. I I don't, I'm trying to remember how. You would have known her from exchanges or something. I'm pretty yeah, sure. I'm it sure it had good. to have been. Um, <laughs> A lot of people knew me. I just didn't know everybody. Yeah. I can understand that. <laughs> so, um, I do remember the Adams now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyhow, like the, the, they were, they were a hilarious family. Um, super irreverent in in you know in maybe one of the the best ways uh yes i know exactly what you're talking about yep uh now that i've got like young kids i'm like oh like that's yep that's what that that's what that was <laughs> like when you've got really young kids man it's just like survival like <laughs> yep anything beyond survival is icing on the cake yep that's it oh my gosh so, yeah, i remember being in their home a few times they're great people yeah um Okay, so where to from uh, from Aberdeen um, down to Glasgow? So three months, three months with Peacock. <laughs> Went to Glasgow, and, and this this is where things like really took a turn on my mission. Um, so I I was with uh, Stringbean, Elder Stringfellow, Brad Stringfellow. Um, if you've got if you don't have him on the lineup, do you, do you have him on the lineup? Uh, I've reached out to him. I haven't heard back from him yet. So I'll definitely definitely someone that we we want to talk to you because he served with a lot of the most recent younger missionaries than myself. So we've covered a lot of his, uh, his companionship and, bases. Yeah. Um, I, I can reach out to him. Uh, our Mac, uh, our Mac Richard knows him, um, super well, pretty quite well too. And so does, so does Alistair. Okay. So, um, yeah, served with string bean and man, this was like, um, I can't remember who he was with before me, but man, things like really took a turn. Like, I think both he and I were just like down for extreme change and different things. And so, um, I think it kind of caught, um, I think he came from Paisley or something or he was, yeah, I think he was in, uh, Paisley or air at the same time that, um, Richard and Alistair were zone leaders there. Right. Um, and they, they had started sort of like some pretty, um, just like extreme, do or die type missionary work they're like screw it we're doing it here um and uh the saying was was uh you know between us we're like okay we're gonna lay down the turn like you know we're gonna change things um and like a like a zero tolerance of not baptizing sort of rule um and 
Uh, it was very intense um, and very polarizing. And so we called it, so the nickname was Hammer Time. Um, and it was like, all right, like it's Hammer Time. Like, let's go in. And we did some stuff that um, like, pro- like, I don't even feel totally comfortable airing this, but um, we did a bunch of stuff that like, it was extreme, man. We would go into people's apartments, like missionaries' apartments, show up unexpected, like go in and like anything that was sort of a distraction, like a toy, a trinket, a picture of like, you know, something that wasn't Jesus, man. That stuff was like, we would guilt trip people. We'd take stuff down from the walls. We'd throw it into like garbage bags and like take it out. It was extreme. Like, wow. like Gestapo, man. Like we were hard, we were hardcore. Um, and so as you can guess, it was very polarizing. Um, some people really embraced it. Like there were people like Coford, Quentin Coford, I remember was kind of like jokey, like funny guy. And then hammer time came around and we, we like went into his apartment and like just berated him. Um, and he's like, yes, yes, yes. Like I understand, et cetera. Um, and he embraced it and he's like, look, like this is to, to make me a better person. And he like, man, he was like a firecracker. He was like a very high performer. And there were a lot of people that it did that for like, um, where, uh, so I think that this, the spirit of it was, um, you know, let's live in 1830s, the 1830s church, not like the 2010s church or 2000s church where like, um, you know, like people get moved by the spirit and you just freaking do stuff. Right. And like, I, we wanted, I wanted to, and we wanted to feel like we were in this sort of like, feel the, the religious excitement of other times. And the, the only way that we could think of was just sort of like, um, just be very extreme. Like if you feel moved to, to do something, don't, don't be blocked by like your shyness or social norms. Just like if you feel moved and you feel like this is the right thing to do, you just do it, like blow everything out of the way. Like people aren't going to like you. Uh, sometimes, um, you know, it, it's definitely not going to be comfortable. Like I was generally a shy person. Um, Elder Stringfellow, I think by nature is like not, not super shy necessarily, but he's like polite. So this was not in either of our nature, but we just, at some point we're like, man, we need to make, things happen here. And so, um, and that's what we felt moved to do. And so, um, yeah, hammer time happened and, uh, it, um, it brought like a bunch, uh, it, it polarized things a ton, uh, but, but things started happening. Um, and we just encouraged people, you know, it's like, okay, like you talk to someone, like, why didn't, you know, did you invite them to baptism? Why not? Like, is it wrong to invite them to baptism? No. Okay. Like invite them to be baptized. They can say no, that is their prerogative. Like they, they have agency. Um, but it is our duty not to like question whether or not they should be invited, but to just invite them. Um, and with that sort of like shift in mentality, man, things, things, uh, it felt again, it felt like summer, um, and, uh, just like extreme, like, you know, tons of stuff was happening. Like lots of people were being baptized. People were excited to come to district meetings and report on numbers rather than like, Oh yeah. You know, like here are my numbers they are kind of crappy. Like, this is why they're crappy. People were excited and like coming in like, Oh, like we have this many commits. Oh, like you don't have, you know, you need five more, whatever, five more lessons. Like, let's go teach them. Like open your book right now. Like your, your area book, we're going to start just calling people and say, we're coming over to teach a lesson or something. And it was just like very, um, super forward. Um, and, and I like it in, in some ways it felt totally uncomfortable, but after I got over that hurdle, it was like very, um, I felt like a totally different person. Um, so it was there for, uh, I think we were together for three or four and a half months there. Um, we did some like weird stuff. Like we would always go to, um, what was it like, uh, Tesco or Marks and Sparks at like, man. We, so also I completely Mark, got my like Marks and Sparks. I haven't heard that term in so long. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> must, like, uh, I think I was a little bit, okay. So this also another part, like people are gonna be like stupid O'Brien. Like I actually, somehow I did not take all of the ire. I took a surprisingly small amount of the ire. I think other, some other missionaries caught more of, of the, you know, like backlash than I did, uh, for some reason, even though I was definitely one of the, like, String Bean and I, I would say, are like chief instigators here. Um, anyhow, so um, we also were not like perfect by way of rules. Um, and so we would be out, like as I'm sure you probably experienced yourself, like past nine, um, many nights, um, for whatever reason, like you're in another area or whatever. Anyhow, so it turns out at 8.50, um, you get the best deals at Tesco and Marks and Sparks because they give you the stuff that's going to expire that day. Um, you can go to the back of the store and you can buy it for real cheap. And so I just remember we got some, like, we got some really nice food for like dirt cheap. 
because we weren't getting any dinner appointments. Like members at that point freaking hated us because we were like pretty hardcore. And, um, and so we were eating whatever scrub we could get from these stores. <laughs> Oh, and uh, we, our diet was like messed up. But anyhow, uh, Roy Peckham, who was in our area, he was like good at cooking. And so he like, we bought this like really nice, like roast something in for like a dollar and or a pound. And he cooked it for us. It marked down from like 20 pounds because it was going to be like thrown out that day. Um, oh, and yeah, I had some like some great times. Um, as Christian Mosiah alluded to, um, uh, I think we were before he was driving 130 from from Edinburgh to Glasgow. We were we were driving, uh, we were driving one you know 110 120 from Edinburgh to Glasgow. So we, we ended up spending a good amount of time oh um, going back and forth, um, and yeah, and uh, had had um, I'm trying to think. There were just a lot of like almost all of my mission was ended up being more time with missionaries than members. Not more time with, but like. It, it felt in my brain like more centered around maybe not a good thing, but um, it was a lot about sort of like changing lives through the missionaries and of the missionaries. Um, and so, um, yeah, we were together three to four and a half months. Um, that was a, a like a blast, man. Like those were some of the the best. Um, it's weird to say like the best days of your life or whatever, but th that, those were definitely some of the highlights because um, I don't know. It was just uh, it, it felt like we were doing um what we needed to do um even if people didn't like it um okay so from there skip forward uh we went to um we went to uh, i went to to edinburgh um so i i was a trio with alistair and richard uh for like i think three weeks or something before richard went home um richard goes home richard mcconkey and then uh, and I'd become like, I'd, we'd never really served together until that very last stint, but I'd always like admired him from afar um, as sort of like erudite area, area type person. And I think everyone had sort of like a man crush on him because like his grandpa is like, you know, uh, RBM. And, um, uh, and so um, anyhow, like I was like, okay, this is, this is, you know, cool to get served with him. Finally, like we'd become friends from afar for, you know, partway through the mission. And um and then I was with Alistair and Alistair and I both at this point had this sort of like very, uh, Alistair from Paisley onward, I think had, had a very, uh, no nonsense sort of like persona. Um, and so between Alistair, myself, uh, and elder string fellow, um, people either loved us or hated us, but there was nobody in the middle. And, um, and then, uh, Christian came into the group and then Quentin. So over time, and I think with Quentin, it sort of like killed, you know, hammer time died, uh, at, at Tobias Halford. And, and Christian talked about this as like sort of love coming back. I think that was definitely the right move. Um, but I, I do think that there was like, there was a period in which it was, it was the right, like, you know, hopefully I don't go to hell for this, but uh, I think, I think we, I think we did the right thing. Um, <laughs> maybe it should be repenting, but, um, yeah, it was just it certainly, you know, it felt like uh, a, a major turning around. So I, I was in Edinburgh for, I th think, three months uh, with Alistair. And then um, and then Stringfellow came in for the last two or three weeks uh, and killed us. Or maybe it was the last month. I can't remember. He was in there for a little while with us. Killed us both off. And then Christian, or actually, shoot, no, 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 it wasn't Christian. Someone came in with him. I think it was Quentin Coford. And then Christian um, came in and um, anyhow, um, yeah, uh, had a blast. Oh man. One of the, one of the memories from, from the mission home um, we love to listen to, I don't know if, if you guys ever did this, but we listened to like, at some point in your mission, you start to like, get a little, like you get a little bit looser with the rules and you're like, you know, you go from like only Motab to like, now we're going to listen to EFY music to, and then we're going to like, listen to like, you know, put a little bit of Sufjan Stevens Christmas music in there and uh, Sufjan's Christmas music. There's one song that they just go into this like rock, you know, jam for part of it. Uh, and we were playing this like loud as we're like cleaning upstairs in the mission home. And, um, <laughs> and president Frederick comes up and he just starts talking to us. And then it goes into this like really <laughs> loud, like rock sequence. And I was just like, flush red i was like oh man i feel so terrible um <laughs> he didn't say anything about it but anyhow net net is we did not listen to that anymore 
um, <laughs> after, afterwards. Um, it was like all instrumental and anyhow, whatever. Uh, so that was the end of it. So I, I apologize to any missionaries that I that um, uh, had to deal with me um, throughout the mission and uh, on, in, in any number of capacity, any number of ways. Uh, but um, hopefully folks were edified and uplifted and feel mostly, mostly positive at the end of it. Um, yeah, that's it. That was the mission. So the question that I have for you is, you know, how you kind of had, let's see, almost a full year with the Vereens and then a, and then a little bit more than a full year with the Fredericks. You know, tell us a little bit more about your memories, obviously of them and kind of how you saw a transition in the mission through, you know, the Vereens going home and the Fredericks coming in. Um, yeah, it was very like, uh, their styles were pretty different. Um, I think both were awesome. Like they're, they're both just, you know, amazing people. Um, like now that I'm however many years old, um, 36, I'm just like, dang, like, I still don't know how they do it. Like at the time I was like, oh man, they're, they're amazing. This must just be like, if you're, once you get older, maybe you can like be awesome like this. But now I'm just like, oh my gosh, like, I don't think we'll ever be, uh, ever be like that. But, um, yeah, they were just like, I, I remember they had like huge hearts and hands, um, and hugs. Um, the Vreens were like very, uh, the word like very loving people um and president frederick uh this also like their their physiques also like showed this like president brings they were both really big big men um president frederick man if you hugged him you're, it was like hugging like he was a, a rock he, like an explosive company guy that like blew up and got granted out of the mountains <laughs> and you felt like you were hugging a mountain when you hugged that guy like he must have worked out like a lot um he yeah. was freaking solid man um you know <laughs> handshake like you feel like you're just gonna like crush your you know, your bones but um and that was the kind of their style like the Vereens were like very loving the the fredericks were like kind people um but definitely i remember like whenever we started like bringing out sort of hammer time and this sort of like no nonsense like let's just like barrel down and like make stuff happen um, they were totally down with it. And I, I, I got the feeling that they were like, you know what, this is what we need right now. We need this sort of like, um, uh, focusing of everyone in the mission on, um, you know, getting over, um, it'd be interesting to hear their take on it. Maybe they're just like, oh, these apostate freaking, you know, leaders, like we just need to get them, flush them out of the system or whatever. And like, we didn't want to send them home, but, um, anyhow, uh, yeah, they, they were, they were like very open to and accepting of that. And, um, you know, like, uh, I, I don't necessarily like at this stage in my life, I wouldn't say like one is like a better thing than the other. I think, I honestly think that cycles are, are pretty healthy. Like it's healthy to go through. I don't know if you've heard this, but, um, uh, Frank, what is it? It's, um, iron, iron rod versus Leona. Have you heard that saying, uh-uh. um, it's iron rod meaning there's like one fixed way it's like very strict like it's it's the other way is like letter of the law versus spirit of the law sort of thing but like iron rod got like there's one path forward hold to it stay close don't vary from it or your toast leona like you know here's general guidance go in this way like do you know live live a good life um and so i think that um the vereens very much felt like a leona uh presidency when i was when i was with them uh, maybe it was different at the beginning of the mission i don't know or their mission um and then the fredericks again maybe it was different after i left like i get the feeling that it was a little bit different after i left like there needed to be some toning down um but it was very you know very iron rod like you know um we need to baptize more that's why we're here like god has asked us to come to scotland not to um make friends but to baptize people and to bring them the gospel um, and so we were going to do that. And so our, the baptism rate went way up. Um, and I remember one of the, one of the questions was like about retention afterwards. Right. Um, like we, we were, we went from being, I don't know, like almost the bottom of Europe West to the second, uh, with the top one being like Cape Verde or something like that, which is, you know, Tiny island. cheating a little bit because it was basically Africa, which is like a completely different culture and blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah. So like we, we went from the bottom to the top, um, on, on baptisms. Um, I don't know as far as like 
um, retention where, where things stood. Um, but, uh, um, I know that that was definitely as, as we were baptizing a lot, lot more people, there was definitely this question of like, well, are they going to stay? Um, and there was a big shift towards like member missionary work. Like that was part of sort of, you know, hammer time was like, uh, go to members and challenge members. And this is why members also hated us is because it was like, Hey, by the way, missionary work isn't just about missionaries knocking doors. It's actually way better if members introduce their friends. Why? Because like, um, they'll retain way better. Uh, but two, like, wouldn't you like to go to church with like someone who you're already friends with? Wouldn't that be great? Um, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't you like to not have to anyhow, um, you know, uh, like, constantly anyhow it, it's much better membership works like miles better but some people didn't want that and did not appreciate the way that we them to um so yeah that, that's kind of like the chief difference i think between the Breens and the fredericks that i experienced sort of like one going out the other coming in is it was like uh leahona went to iron rod um yeah well i i appreciate you sharing your perspective in regards to that because you know Obviously, you know, three quarters of my mission, I was with the Vreens. And then the last six months, I was with the Fredericks as they were there and kind of getting their feet wet, you know, it and the transition period felt like, at least for me, that it was very like being elongated because it was my last six months. And maybe it was just me being trunky, but, you know, the more and more conversations and things that I hear from missionaries who were there after I had gone home spoke about the, like you said, the polarization of hammer time and being exactly obedient and involving member members in the missionary work. And really it, it just was like a, a purging of the old, but not necessarily purging, but enhancing it and putting everyone in a position where it was like, Hey, we can do this a heck of a lot better if we involve every single person in, in some facet. And the nature of the Scot, the Scots as it is, is they kind of are to themselves and they keep to themselves as much as they can apart from those that they're really close with. And so sharing something like that, that is in the culture of Scotland, a very private conversation most of the time, unless you're, for Celtic or Rangers um, is, you know, a completely different experience. And so I'm sure it was a huge, a huge undertaking to draw people out of their proverbial shells that they were in for the longest time in order for them to open up on how can we invite more people? How can we be more involved both with our friends and helping invite them to experience the gospel in the ways that we love it? And, so I don't know. It's it's just interesting to hear your perspective of it because you were kind of smack dab in the middle of that. And it's, you know, same thing with our conversation with, with Al Martin. And I'm sure at some point we'll get to talk to Richard and just hear all of those things and the mindset and the thought process that went into it. But ultimately the success came and that's really what it was all about. Obviously we all struggle out with retention you know i'm sure that a lot of us can talk about people we baptized or brought to the church that may or may not be still actively involved but that's still their choice right it's giving them the opportunity to take the gospel and run with it or you know do it do with it what they would what they may right so i appreciate you sharing that and the perspective that's there that's awesome yeah yeah likewise i, I think it's i mean um, I think that we did it. Uh, so President Yates is probably that. That's probably like action. So I, I don't think I ever even met President Yates. I think I may have seen him once or something. Um, I think he actually did it the right way, and then there were a whole bunch of us doing a poor imitation of that. Um, like I think that uh, you can be lo- like we tried to be loving. For, for the record, like I was not trying to be a jerk, um, and I don't think anyone else was. Um, although it may have seemed like that. But, but it, it, it's it's extremely difficult to to strike the balance of loving but also uh, reprimanding um, and encouraging um, uh, while not giving permission if that makes sense yeah um, and so it's it's like you it's a razor sharp edge that you have to be on and I think that that's where you like absolutely have to be the closest to the spirit and and 
get other people to be there in the same place and like be rallying around this sort of common goal. Um, because man, if anyone is not like, you know, on the same wavelength, it's, it, it is, um, it takes the sort of like any un- discomfort and just amplifies it. Like any, any sort of like weirdness that you may have had or between people or whatever, man, it's like whenever people get ultra intense, um, the, the feelings get that way. So anyhow, sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll shut up about that, but no, no, ultimately I, I appreciate it. Cause you know, we joke about it, but you know, Jack and I, and, the, the promise of our wife getting hotter as we chapped in the rain or, you know, how many doors you could knock. And, you know, ultimately I saw when I was in Aberdeen, the way that the members started to rally themselves around the missionary work there because we became more involved in their lives. And, but I hadn't gotten to the point of, you know, trying to, be overly zealous about how we invited them to act in regards to missionary work. And so I think that was just the next step. You know, it wasn't necessarily that, that I wasn't able or willing to do something like that. It just was my time. And now hearing everyone's stories after the fact, you know, like you said, I watched Quinn Coford come into the mission and he was a very, very outgoing individual. He was, he was happy. He was jokey. He was just, you know, that type of person, which I enjoyed being around. And then to hear, you know, his progression and his mission was all the more fascinating to me because just like what Christian said, <laughs> he's just, he comes off as a kind of a goofy guy, but eventually he put on his thinking cap and said, Hey, it's time to buckle down and let's get after it. And good for him. You know, that's a, a maturation piece that comes to all of us at some point in our missionary work. Right. So, uh, but yeah, that, that's really cool. Is there anyone else as we're, we're thinking you've mentioned your, your companions and some great names Is there anyone else you can think of from the mission that you'd like to hear from as we continue on this journey? Yeah, I think my list was, so some of them you've already had like, uh, you know, Alboy Christian, um, uh, pretty different, like, or four that I was like super excited peacock. Um, uh, and then, um, Richard, I think you've already got him teed up. Like he's the one who actually texted me. He's like, yo, you know, have you listened to this yet? And I was like, no, not yet. I haven't gotten to it yet. Yeah. Um, and then I listened to like five episodes in a row. Um, uh, I think he's already on. So string fellow, you should definitely get, um, McLeod. Um, I think jump would be a great one. Colby Hawkins. If you don't have him Depold, I think is on your list. Uh, Paul Christensen. I don't know if you remember him. He's in my ward here. Um, oh, really? We had him over for dinner. Yeah, like a month ago. Um, his wife and two kids. Um, and then uh, Roy Peckham, I think, is also in Houston. I haven't seen him here uh, yet. Um, uh, yeah, Roy would be a, a good person to get on here. Um, do, do you have Biaker on here? I think someone's already said him, but Biaker. I've reached out to Elder Bjerke and he's, he's one that, you know, he responded, but he didn't commit to something. So Elder Bjerke, definitely come on and uh, we can talk about our fun times in, uh, in Kirkati. <laughs> Why did you serve with him? I didn't. I was in the same district as him. Um, I think he was with Elder Bass early on when I was in Dunfermline. So Wait, is, was, has Russ Bass, right? Has he been on yet? No, but he's coming. I finally tracked down his phone number and uh, we're in touch. So that's excited great. to hear, hear from Russ. Um, I have reached out to Paul Christensen a couple of times and have not heard back from him. So ping please, me again. Ping me in. or please, I, I, I can ping him too. Yeah. Yeah. F- for, for, for sure. I mean, link us up in some way, shape or form, maybe send us his email and we can hound him that way too. Who else? Uh, <laughs> was Pol- Polin was on here. Yep. Doug was on. Yep. Um, and then, uh, who else talked about McLeod? Um, yeah, that's a pretty good, um, I'm trying to think of someone who's like, that may not be, um, Oh, okay. well, the, the sisters. Yeah. I don't know. I, don't, I have no clue if they're men. This is going to sound really bad. I don't know. <laughs> It's been 15 years. So 
<laughs> I don't know uh, who's still in the game or not, but um, so to speak. Uh, but the sisters, uh, you know, um, Marjorie Lyon, sorry, is Marjorie Lyon, uh, Bonnie Siegmiller, and Sister Green. I want to say her name was Sister Green. I can't remember. That might not be right. Is that right? <laughs> I think you're right. Um, I remember Sister Lyon. Um, and it was Sister Lyon, it was Sister Siegmiller, and Sister. I think you might be right. I don't, again, I, I don't remember all sister, the, the senior sisters with perfect uh, knowledge. We did mention on our last podcast with um, Zach Clark that uh, sister Sieg Miller did pass away in May. We just barely found that out. Um, but you know, I'm sure she's listening, Yeah, uh, but I loved her. She was uh, sister Reed who was the senior sister we had that served in beef. Um, she, was uh, Sister Sieg Miller's companion down there when I was in serving in Johnston. So loved her to love her to death. She's wonderful. Maybe Sister Reed, actually. My wife is screaming if there's a bug in the other room. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Sister she, Reed did mention being in Inverness and having, you know, having the elders over for dinner and all of that. Yeah, so. then maybe that's who it was, is Sister Reed. Okay, yeah. Sister Reed must be the yeah, yeah. Oh man. Okay. Um and then um yeah, some of the uh I'm trying to think of who else. Um oh Sarah, I don't know what her last name is now now. Sarah Jagger. Yeah. I hope I hope we're not screwing up her name, Sarah Jagger. I think that for sure that's, that was right. Marcus McBride. I've seen so I was friends with I think I still am, unless they unfriended me. Marcus McBride and Stuart Pattenden. Um those those two would be fun to to get on. Um have I, either of them? I, I can't find I can't find Marcus anywhere. I mean, obviously, some people are absent when it comes to social media. So, um, he, I have he reached, like I think he went to like Adobe or something. Did he? But oh, you can find him on LinkedIn. Yeah, I'm sure. If you find him, let us know. Um, I've reached out to to Stuart Patton, and he was my companion in Aberdeen before Peacock. So, I'd like to have him on at some point, and love to hear from him. Um, but yeah, um, I, I added Sister Jagger on Facebook just the other day. She's actually in Scotland right now. Really? Uh, yeah, she's on like a tour. She's been posting all these awesome pictures and stuff, so it's been cool to watch. But yeah, uh, yeah. well, good. Well, oh, here's one. I, I bet you I, I would put money that, unfortunately, that I don't think he would do it. But um, I really liked him. Black. Uh, what is his first Brian? name? Brian. Brian Black. Yeah. Yeah, I. I have reached out to him, but I haven't heard back. So I will continue to try and get in touch with him. Marcus McBride is on, on, I'm connected with him on LinkedIn. He's a senior product manager, program manager at uh, Adobe. So he's someone that. Um, All right. We'll find him. Yeah. <laughs> cool. That's the amazing thing. Jack is the LinkedIn expert more than me. So yeah, I just found Marcus McBride on there. So. Nice. He's online right now, man. Getting closer. He's online right now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, him a message. Yeah. I will um, certainly do that after we're done here. Cool. Well, John, thank you so much for taking time. Uh, I know you said you'd talk for a short while, but we've, we've made it a decent amount of time. So thank you for sharing your thoughts and uh, your experiences and your, you know, ultimately all of us have unique experiences and, Scotland is what ties us together. And so it's a lot of fun to see how we have that interconnectedness um, from our time serving there. So we really appreciate you making some time for us. And, uh, um, you know, one thing we've left off the podcast the last few times, and we apologize, but if you are listening and would like to be on the podcast, you can always email us. The email address is sempodcast at 51spylaw.com or go on to 51spylaw.com and fill out a contact sheet and we'll get you on the schedule. So, John, thanks again. We really appreciate your time. We love you and I uh, look forward to talking to you more in the future. All right. Thanks, guys. Take all right. Care. See you, John. Bye. Bye. Bye.